How many of you know that if you're going down a maze, you ever been in a maze, like a corn maze, or even done it with a pencil or something like that? If you go down this one and, it, and it's a dead end, you, know, you don't keep going down it. Come on. It's like there's a lot of Christians that, that have worn a rut down this dead end path. And you meet each other on the way back and forth. Hi, how are you doing? What's down there? Nothing. I figured. And keep going anyway. And people do that because they just say, well, I, I don't know what to do. So we just do what isn't working. Come on. How many of you know that that is the definition of insanity? Yes. Yes. Keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over, even though it doesn't work. Thinking that someday God is going to change it. See, the whole thing is in our persistence. Well, persistence is good. But if you persistently be ignorant, <laughs> that'd be bad. <laughs> That's not good. Amen? And so we need to open our heart and get a fresh look at the Word of God, the voice of God. I entitled this, The Voice of His Word. If you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn to Genesis chapter 3. I love Genesis Genesis is the beginning of, uh, of all things, everything. And if you listen to the Bible, look at it and read it, you're going to see that everything kind of goes in a circle. It all goes back to where it started. And that's where we're headed. So if you want to see where you're going, just look where the human race has come from. Because God has taken us full circle back into his original intention for the human race, for mankind. Now, there's a lot of people that aren't going to make it, but you know what? It comes down to a personal choice. See, when Adam transgressed, he knew what he was doing, and he transgressed against God. Now, partly it could have been because Eve was deceived, and he saw her fall away from God, and he might have just dove in after her, knowing that God you know, would, would save him, God would do something, and that would be commendable, Adam. But see, my heart isn't for a commendable Adam. I'd like to slap him <laughs> for throwing us under the bus. Now, I'm kidding, but Adam, when I get up there, I'm going to hug your neck. Hallelujah. You know why? Because I've not, I haven't been there. You know, it, it's easy to judge other people. Come on, don't look so pious. <laughs> it's easy to judge other people. Now, come on, it, it doesn't take long for us to have an opinion about someone else. Hello? You can see somebody go down the, the wrong way on, on a street and think, fool, what an idiot. What are you doing? Why don't you pay attention? Then you find yourself on there and you think, well, where did they put this here then? You know, we always blame someone else. So we look at what they do, but we, we, can, we consider our intentions. Well, I intended to do right. Come on. Hello. Listen, you've been coming to this church long enough to know you might as well open up your heart because I'm going to pry it open. <laughs> I go in and look in the cracks and the crevices. I find dirt where, where most people don't. <clears throat> Amen. Because the whole thing is about a clean heart before God, a pure heart before God. It isn't about, about a bunch of knowledge. And people are, are knowledge seekers. They're addicted to knowledge. And for whatever reason, they all want to know what God says you can't find out. He said, what's that when he's coming back? And we got people who spend their whole life going through the Bibles and, you know, you know and, the, and the prophecies and everything and determining when is Jesus coming back. And it's funny that they never do stop at that verse that says, no man knows. Well, I read that, no man knows, so that's good enough for me. I don't study it. I don't have an opinion, right? Well, I do. I guess that's a lie, huh? But anyway, everyone uh, applies it to certain things. But, but if you look at certain scriptures, it'll give you a ballpark of possibly when the Lord is going to return. And I think that part of that ballpark in determining that is the condition of the church. If we just go along doing what we do, 
right? Just trying to live the life that we, we can and the best we can and living according to what I think and what I perceive. And then we just keep right on going. Well, what if we got another thousand years? But what if the church would really wake up and maybe it's cut down to 10 years? Huh? See, but we got a lot of Christians that are tied in more to this earth and this life than they are to God and His will. And if God came down and showed everybody, if everybody would do this and get on board, I'll come back in 10 years, you know, they'd say, never mind. Why? Well, I like my life. I like doing what I'm doing. Well, yeah, but look at what you could have. That's all right. Come on now. How many you know that the human being is the only thing that can, can, can know God and be blessed of and stuff like that and in a heartbeat just turn and say, forget you and walk off and walk away? They, they do it every day. Every day. That's why Paul wrote Romans 7. A lot of people wonder, why did Paul write that? Well, he wrote it for you. He says, why do I do the things that I shouldn't do? And how come I can't do the things that I should do? Come on, now, isn't that talking to us? Doesn't it hit you right between the eyes? Right? And he says, I can't figure it out. Why is it so easy to be bad and so hard to be good? Hello? Hey, I know you're in church, but I also know you. So come on, lighten up. (laughs) <laughs> lighten up I mean it isn't like we never miss it hello probably on the way to church <laughs> but here's the thing God loves us God loves us and he sees us perfect in Christ and he sees our potential and that's how he concluded us is complete in Christ Jesus That's the way God the Father is. He is a Father. He's our Father. Hallelujah. Because doing the same thing over and over and over and over, expecting a different result is what? It's crazy for sure. Insanity. All right, look at this. Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. And the eyes of them, talking about Adam and Eve. I want you to see the moment that Adam bit that apple. And I don't know if it's an apple, but we'll go for apple. We have apple now. It isn't so great. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) as soon as he partook of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right, his eyes were opened and he saw and knew that he was naked and he saw that he was separated from God. Come on, watch this. Verse 7. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. Isn't that interesting? They were always naked. But they didn't know it. Come on. They were always naked. But they didn't know it. You know, some of the people that we judge wrongly have always been that way. And we should know it. How I many you know that it says that when, when, when you look at the splinter in another person's eye, that it's saying you got a log in yours? And there's all kinds of people who preach all kinds of things, but this is what I believe that it's talking about. See, it didn't like, you know, some big... Because if, if, if it was focusing on the log in your eye, you'd never see the splinter in theirs in the first place. Right? But I think the whole key to that story is the first question, why? Why do you see the speck in someone else's eye? Not like it just materialized. Oh my gosh, you got a speck in your eye. You know? If I was you, well, you're not. (laughs) Come on. I hear preachers, I used to say it until the Lord corrected me. I say, if I was God, I never would have chose me. Right? And that's what most people think. If I was God, I wouldn't have chose me. Yeah. But they don't know. See, God says the abased are going to excel. 
over the talented. Come on. And I said that one time. I was laughing. Man, if I was God, I never would have chose me. The Holy Spirit boomed down and says, well, you're not God. I mean, I just, it straightened me out. And then he followed it with this. If you were me, you would have made the same choice. But here's the third one. Maybe I know something you don't. Yes, sir. Shut my mouth. Right? You just instantly, sorry. See, but it isn't correction. It's an opening for direction. It's saying, I chose you for a reason and a purpose that you don't know yet. So just get in line. Follow me. Come on. Say, I'm chosen. I don't know what for, but God does. Here I am, Lord. I'm following you. Amen. And listen, where God is taking us is not the same place that you would get on your own. That's why it's about grace. It's about God's ability in us to do what we can't do. If you could do it, get at it. But you can't. (laughs) That's why we need the grace of God. Thank God for the grace of God. Amen. You know, Paul said, looked at some other people and said, there go I, but for the grace of God. You know, we're, we're all on a downhill slide, but for the grace of God. You know, you think you got to where you are by yourself? Are you kidding? No way. See, the grace of God is paving as we're walking. Now, we'd like to, you know, give me a map. Let me see where we're headed. Let me look around the corner. And, and you can a little bit, right? But that's called faith. By faith, we call those things to be not as though they are. What? I'm complete in Christ. I'm pleasing God. I'm going somewhere special to do something awesome. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the reason it says that if symptoms hit you, symptoms of sickness or something, you say, praise God, I'm healed. I'm over this. See, but religion, it gets into you that there's a possibility of healing. See, when God heals me, I'll be so thankful. Well, he healed you 2,000 years ago. And he's just trying to get you to agree with it. Right? I'm already healed. Praise God. I'm already prosperous. You know, and for some reason, see, prosperity and money is just a ball and chain for most Christians. They just drag it. You know, they, they, want, they want more. Want, want, want. See, but it didn't say want a lot and then God will bless you. He says, he says you've got to see yourself Amen. with prosperity. Yes. Yes. Amen? You've got to see yourself. Well, I'm on a fixed income. Well, it's not fixed. It's broke. <laughs> but, but if you really fix it, then income will come to you. Yes. Amen? Amen? I mean, there's all kinds of stories, hundreds, thousands of stories of people that just said, enough's enough, and they just got out there and started believing God, and God began to prosper them for the goodness of God. How quick did the voice come? Immediately. The eyes of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. Naked meaning what? You're in this spot, and there's no way out. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So what we usually do when we enter into the nudist colony... (laughs) Don't go crazy. (laughs) Of effort. And of blessing. Right? We're stripped. What do we do? We lean to ourselves. So let's sew some fig leaves together. Hey, what a great idea. Now, there's a couple of things wrong with this. Number one, Adam and Eve were the only ones on the earth. (laughs) 
What I'm saying is that humanity isn't all that smart. <laughs> and so they were sewing fig leaves together so they couldn't see each other naked. Why? Come on. Now I'm speaking to husbands and wives right now. No, I'm kidding. <clears throat> but it was this self-effort, this self-covering. It's what? We're separated. We're naked from the blessings of God. We're void. See, when God blesses you beyond your, your fondest dreams and everything, you don't even look at self. You don't care who looks at you. Yeah. Want to look at me? Look, I'm blessed. <laughs> what do I care what you think? Amen. That's why people that drive down the street in a Bugatti or something, it's like, go ahead and look. <laughs> See, but you go down in a... In, in a, in, in, in a uh, a 2015 Volkswagen, it's like, what are you looking at? <laughs> Come on. You're just dressed in your normal clothes. It's a, what are you looking at? But man, when you're decked out with Gucci and all this stuff, it's like, check me out. See, when the natural is, is, is glistening, it's blinging. We don't care if people see us, right? But if we don't see that we're compared to some of these people, it's like, we're what? Trying to hide ourselves. If you try to be dignified, stop it! Yes. We're not dignified. We're deadified. Dignified, glorified, you choose. Hallelujah. Now watch this, verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And in the middle of this, see, they instantly fell from the things of God. When they partook of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, instantly their eyes were opened. They saw that they were naked. And that quick, they heard the voice of God walking. The voice of God came to them immediately. So you think that God would come down there with a big switch Right? Did I tell you not to eat from that? No, instantly, the voice of God was right there. Adam, he what? Called his name. God knows your name. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you do, instantly the voice of God is there with you. And he brings the coolness of the anointing. And the peace. Not the hot and the fervor and the heat of self-condemnation and guilt and shame. But he came in as a cool breeze, known what? As the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit vibrates and hovers, waiting for the Word of God to come. And when the Word of God is spoken, it goes into creation. And the Holy Spirit is hovering over you right now. He's hovering in your, in your heart. He's hovering over you, your body. He's hovering in your life. And He's waiting for that spoken Word of God. He's waiting for the voice to show up. And the voice is going to show up in where? The garden. The New Testament says the garden is your heart. And in there is where you dictate your whole life. But most of us dictated by things that you've learned in the natural, and who you think you are, who you determined you are because of your personality, because of your character, because of your behavior, because of, of your bloodline, 
Because of your color, your race, your gender, your, 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 your. And the Holy Spirit says, if you give me half a chance, I'll drag you over to a cross and nail you there. Because Christ was crucified to us and we've been crucified to the world and the world's been crucified to us. And there's something about that cross and it's not just the implement of Christ dying on it, but it is the separation from an old covenant of people that was lost from God and a new covenant where we are His family, we are His church, we were born from the seed of God's own loins. That's what made us a new creation, a creation that never did exist before. It literally has nothing to do with your flesh and your natural life. It has everything to do with the life that was freely given on your behalf. And that is Christ. And he says, I suffered and I died and I poured myself out and I've kept nothing from you. But I give you everything that I conquered. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. So in my dream, did you forget? <laughs> in my dream, I found myself caught up in this place and I was in this house and it just seemed funny. And I was walking around looking at it and thinking, whoa, this is really, really different. It was kind of like an old house. A lot of wood, 14 layers of paint. <laughs> looking at it and stuff. And all of a sudden, bam, I was gone. I was caught away. And I stood before this demonic entity. And he come at me and it was like, whoa, for a moment. Right? Wasn't waiting on this. Figuring it. And, and I could smell his breath and everything. You know? I'm going to kill you. Stuff dripping from his teeth and things, right? And it got me for a second. And then something right here just rose up and I went, <laughs> and he went, and he took off running, and I took off running after him. And he was running and jumping over things, and I was running and jumping over things. He was crawling up buildings, and I was crawling up buildings, and I'm after him. And there's just something inside me saying, Buddy, you don't want me to catch you. And you know what? He didn't. And he went into this marketplace and stuff and, 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 and lost him for a minute. And then I stopped, and I, I just went, What was that? And I wasn't talking about him. I was talking about that. See, I've become something I never was. He said, it's my voice. I said, I like that. I like that. And so I started looking for this other guy. And I found him. And I jumped him from behind. And I flipped him over my shoulder and smashed his face into the cobblestones. I mean, it was like in color. It was in color. And I got him up. And then an angel appeared. And he says, we've been dispatched to help you. I said, then get the others. And whoosh, all these angels just took off. And the Lord said, it's my voice. My voice changes you. All heaven 
is directed to my voice. And they stand at attention to obey your command. And anyway, I woke up, but I was like, what do you do? <laughs> Roll back over and say, let's do this some more. <laughs> and the Lord said, no, do it now. And so I began to pray over all of you and, and people that, that uh, were, were praying for and just breaking the power of, of wickedness and evil, breaking the power of the natural things. So we've come to the place that we accept natural things way too easy. They should be foreign to us. Foreign to us. You've got to begin to uh, develop a spiritual hatred toward evil and wickedness. Amen? But that voice comes, what? For salvation, for health, for healing. For love. Look at Psalm 103, verse 17. It says, But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. Meaning what? The mercy of God is for eternity past and eternity forward. How long is that? Don't try to figure it out. There's never been a time that the mercy of God was not vibrant, active, and available. Long before the earth was created, long before man was created, long before man fell, long before Lucifer fell and was lifted up in pride, long before that, the mercy of God. God is saying that he has never, ever been a God that demanded obedience, that demanded works, that demanded praise and adulation from anybody. Never has, never will be. He says that he has poured mercy out upon us and it becomes fresh Every morning, every morning, the freshness of God hits us and hits our life. See, your heart doesn't forgive you or others. Others don't forgive you. We're all caught up in this doggy dog world and trying to make the best of it, right? Trying to shine, trying to bling, and trying to do something. Until we hit the end of our bottom, and then all of a sudden, we think we're nothing, we're worthless. Job's wife says, curse God and fall dead. Well, partly she was probably tired of listening to him. Come on, don't you get tired of listening to other people's problems? You know? When you first hear this, yeah, yeah, I put an arm around them and I love you, I want to encourage you. But that's all that spews out and pretty soon you start backing up. Listen, if you want someone to help you and be partners in your success, then don't rehearse all this stuff. Quit it! Get out of the cesspool. There's deadly stuff in there. <laughs> the devil will never tell you the truth. There's nothing out there in the world that can compare to the things of God. Amen? Now look at verse 18. He says, To such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Is what? where the mercy is. Verse 19. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments. Hearken unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, 
all ye his host, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord a little. Come on, let's bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. I thank you. I praise you. You're almighty. You're amazing. You're the lover of my soul. You're good. You've given me an abundant life, a good life, a great life. You're doing things in my life. You're you're directing me into great places. You've forgiven me, Lord, of all my sins. You've forgiven me of all my mistakes. Even the ones I'm in right now, you've already forgiven me. And you're leading me out. And my future looks good. My future looks bright. I'm going somewhere to be someone in your kingdom, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. My body worships you. My body is your temple. I thank you, Lord, that no disease, no ailments, no pain, no suffering can be in my body. It comes out in Jesus' name. Poverty and lack leaves my life in the name of Jesus. Unexpected streams of prosperity are invading my life. Praise God. Your grace is making me prosperous. Your grace is making me healthy. Your grace is making me powerful. Hallelujah. I can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. I can cast out devils in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that I'm in your hands. Hallelujah. And whatever I do and wherever I go, it prospers. Every detail of my life works to my advantage that gives more and more praise to you and more and more grace to me. It's never ending. There is no end to your blessings in my life. I was born to be blessed and I was born to be a blessing. I will minister to everyone you bring across my path. I will lay hands on them. I will speak words of truth to them. I will set them free in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, that with these eyes, I will see people set free from addictions in Jesus' name. Everywhere I go, addictions fall off like chains that are broken. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, that every marriage of people that I know is beginning to strengthen and beginning to get stronger. And they're falling deeper and deeper in love with each other and with you, O God. Thank you, Lord, that I am a light in a dark world. And everywhere I go, the light begins to shine and things happen and things change. Praise God. I don't live in a black and white world. I live in technicolor, praise God. Amen, in Jesus' name. Isn't that good? Well, see, that's what God says He wants for us. You know, we're just outlets of the uh, the springs of life. Everywhere we go, things begin to happen. Hallelujah. Say, well, I I need some of that myself. Well, you know, uh, when when you just turn the water on in the hose, the hose gets wet too. So he's going to bless you. Amen. It's there. Look at Psalm 56. Are you getting something out of this? Psalms 56, verse 10. In God will I praise his word. In God will I praise his word. I praise your word, Lord. I praise you, I thank you for your voice that walks and follows me in the cool of the day, Lord. Hallelujah, that you, 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 you keep the heat of this world away from me. Thank you, Jesus. In God will I praise his word, in the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do to me. And that's politicians, too. (laughs) Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee, for thou hast delivered my soul from death. Will not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? Praise God. I'm in the living! I do not walk down any pathways to death. There is nothing in my body that can come into me that will lead me into death and separation from my God in Jesus' name. I break its power in the name of Jesus. I'm healthy, I'm whole. My body resists and hates 
diseases of this world. I'm in this world. I'm not of it. I am not of this world. I am not of this world. I'm not of the social systems of this world. I'm not of the economic systems of this world. I'm not of the economy of this world. I'm not of the medical systems of this world. I'm not of the scientific systems of this world. I am for sure not of the political systems of this world. Praise God. Those that are among themselves that think there's something they know nothing. Are you kidding me? First thing you should know is whether you're male or female. Anyway, <laughs> praise God. He says, I will not walk among the dead. I will live among the living. Anybody want to live among the life of the living? Praise God. It's an abundant life that God has given us. How does the devil come to steal that abundant life? He comes through wrong teaching. If you take it in context... The thief only cometh but to steal, to kill, and destroy. How does he do it? Wrong teaching. Wrong teaching. Listen, the Bible is so simple. Listen to this. Listen to this. Look up here. Look up here. You need this. You need this. All right? Listen to this. This is so simple. The Bible is so simple. The New Testament, the New Covenant, the promises of God, the life that we should be living is so simple, you need help. To misunderstand it. And there's lots of help. Lots of help out there. YouTube's full of help. Facebook's full of help. Churches are full of help. Seminaries are full of help. To misunderstand the simplicity of the things that God gave us. You know the Bible says this too. Maybe you remember reading it. That the gospel is so simple that even a fool can't miss it. Huh? I mean, you've got to be a double-dosed fool. <laughs> come on, come on. I double-dog dare you to get into the New Covenant and into the Bible and see what is rightfully yours. Don't listen to other people. I mean, you can listen to other people, but you need to take it to the Bible. Everything I tell you, go to the Bible and see if I'm telling you the truth, right? It's the gospel we want. It's the gospel we need. It's the gospel that was made flesh that became our Savior. It's the gospel. And the gospel is the power of God. And all those that believe. Amen. Now look at this. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word. He sent what? His word. His word. And his word is what? His voice. He sent his voice and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that people would praise the Lord for his goodness. Oh, that people would praise the Lord for His goodness. Oh, that people would praise the Lord for His goodness. You're a good God. You're full of goodness. You only have goodness. You're only good. You're always good. You're my God. You're my Father. You love me. You take care of me. You do things in my life that I don't even ask you about because you love me. You can't help yourself. Hallelujah. He wants to love you. He wants to hug you. He wants to pull you in tight. He wants to kiss you. He wants to do wonderful things in your life. That's God. That's God. He's the epitome of fathers. Amen. Of fathers. Now look at this. Verse 22, and let them, let's go back, the end of 21, and for his wonderful works to the children of man. What did Nancy say this morning? God is zeroing in on children. This is the whole point of this awakening and things that are going on. God is after children. He's a protector. 
He's a defender. See, the devil's after our children. He's after them. Can you imagine? See, we, we don't even think, we think it's stupid and nothing will come of it, right? And there's been a bill that was, that was uh, put forth uh, in California to lower the age of sexual consent to five years old. Huh? You say, well, I've never passed. The fact that it was entered should shock everybody. All right, closing, Hebrews 6. Are you getting something? We need to go back and see the power of the voice of God, the word of God. That's what created everything. Why would God switch to something else when he started with his word, when he started with his voice, right? The voice of God is here. The word of God is here. Anytime you get attacked or anything starts to happen in your life instantly, the Word of God is there. Amen. It just comes, boom, it's there immediately. Amen. Immediately, the voice of God is there to ring out in your heart to speak and break the power of darkness. Break this thing. It should be the first thing that comes out of your mouth is a break your power, devil, in Jesus' name. I do not accept this, whatever it is. All right? Hebrews 6, verse 17 Wherein God, who? Come on now. See, sometimes people don't even believe it if they read it, but we're going to stop and make you. <laughs> Herein who? Come on. Now, some of you aren't even saying it. Uh, appease your pastor. Herein who? I like that. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. It's what? Impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation the word consolation uh, means to personally, intimately, to draw near, to strengthen one, to comfort one. And the, word, the Greek word consolation literally comes from the word uh, paraclete that is used for the Holy Spirit. Right? He says, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast, and which enters into that within the veil. 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 We got Christians still trying to get behind the veil. Can I let you know there is no veil? Because our hope has already entered. Our hope is Christ. And that is the hope that we have. We are in Christ right now. You're already behind the veil, sweetheart. Yes. And that's where you live and move and have your being. We're in the Holy of Holies. Yes. And it's something I hear all these people have dreams and visions and all this stuff. And God took me to heaven. To do it. Sweetheart, you didn't ever leave heaven. You're in heaven. Yes. See, the confusion is you think you're on earth. And you've got to go there. When God says, you're already there. Well, how could I be there if I'm here? See, you don't get it. See, God has already concluded you. God, the Father, in which He cannot lie, has already concluded you behind the veil in Christ Jesus. So start ruling and reigning in your life from that point. And everything on this point will begin to change. Yes. I'm favored. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. I am favored. Yes. I know that no matter what it is that comes against me, it cannot stay in my life. It will not prevail. Because I already see myself on the other side of it. 
I am prosperous. I am healthy. I am holy. I am wise. I am an instrument of God. I will see millions of people come into the kingdom of God and we will instruct them one by one if necessary in who they are in Christ. This family, this body has been severed and put aside for the end times. Things that are going to happen. There's things that are going to happen in this region that the, the world is going to hear about. The world is going to hear about it. You say, well, I don't know if I believe that. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? <laughs> Anything. Why did God choose Nazareth? Huh? Why didn't God put Jesus in the high rises of Jerusalem or something? No, he put him in the worst place of the worst place. In the bad part of that worst place of the worst place. Of the place that nobody had anything to do with and even liked and didn't even think about it. And the little kids, they say, Nazareth, oh, I'm going to tell your mama. <laughs> See, they wouldn't even say that word. And right out of it came the bright morning star. And he walked around, and everywhere he went, he was the voice walking again. And everywhere he went, light began to shine. Sickness began to depart. Poverty and lack began to fail. Everywhere he went, it was like a, a, a black and white 1930s movie. But when he walked through it, it became technicolor. All over. But you know, there's still people that hid in the black and white and wouldn't come out. And he walked around with his hands wide open, say, all you that labor, come unto me. See, we think that he went and searched out certain people and, and healed them, and there were a few that he did, right? But he was open and available to everybody. And there was a few times when the power of God hit so strong, they had thousands and thousands of people that came out. And he turned around and they said, what are we going to do with all these people? They've been here listening to you teach three days. Come on, you talk about long-winded preachers. <laughs> three days. And surely they're getting hungry and thirsty. What are we going to do? And then Jesus took a, a few loaves and fish and he held them up and he said, What? Thank you, Father. How long has it been since you've done that? Thank you, Father. Thank you. In the Greek it says, he regained his sight. He what? Took him off the crowds. Took him off everything you could see in the natural. Refocused on the Spirit. Thank you, Father. And then God miraculously began to divide the fishes and the loaves and they fed thousands of people and had 12 baskets full left over. See, that's our Father. He doesn't just do enough. He doesn't know what enough is. He's a too good to be true God. He dwells in the overflow, the abundance. That's where He's at. See, your heart is trying to get a few bucks out of him and he wants to bless you to where you have more money and you know what to do with so you can help other people yes. it isn't about you so you can work the sowing and the reaping and the giving and all that and you can amass yourself a, a, a good little nest egg but that's defeating the purpose of the kingdom of God he wants us to be gracious. He wants us to be givers. Where did you get all that money? God gave it to me. Amen. Are you going to give it to other people? No, they can get theirs. God gave this to me. But if you gave it, wouldn't he give you more? 
Maybe. I just don't want to find out. Come on. Come on. Is he a holy God? Is he an amazing God? Is he a righteous God? Does he only bless and never curse us? Does he have the best intentions for us? Has he already laid out the best plan for your life that, that, that can exist? Will you be hurt or harmed if you obeyed and followed him? Never. 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 Even Adam and Eve. They had no temptation. One. How would you like to live a life with only one temptation? How would that make life easier? No, it wouldn't. Because you're still dealing with you. It's like one night, Adam woke up and Eve was poking him in the side and the ribs. He says, what are you doing, honey? He says, I'm counting your ribs. Anyway. I just wonder why you were working late last night. (laughs) Anyway, God's okay. (laughs) Man, the power of God is on someone's head. It's on someone's head. I don't know if it's growing here or what it's doing. uh, You know, you you accept it. I mean, God, uh, how many of you have waved goodbye to you here? Well, turn the wave around. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm feeling the power of God right through here in the, in the shoulders. In the, in the, is, that a, is that a clavicle? Is that a clavicle? Yeah. Is that you? Praise God. In Jesus' name goes into you right now in the name of Jesus. Begin to move your shoulders. Hallelujah. The healing power is there. The pain is leaving. Thank you, Lord. Right here in the bottom of the throat. Who's that? The power of God's healing you right now. Down in the, the, the bottom of the throat. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So take, take, take a deep breath. Power of God is going into the lungs. Going into the lungs. Now listen, God's saying this. This is for somebody. God's saying it. He says, don't you ever say that you earned problems with your lungs because of the life of smoking and things that you've done. Don't say it, says God. I am a healer, and I'm bringing fresh life into your lungs right now. So take a deep breath. See that? Do you feel that? Praise God. See, when he says the old has passed away, he means it. He means it. Praise God. You want to chase devils down, rip their heads off? Listen, we've been empowered by the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. We've been saturated. It's been freely given to purchase us. The blood of Christ. Just meditate on that a little bit. That sickness, that disease, that problem, it has no right to cross that blood. Get it out. And God's saying sometimes you just got to get angry. Not at people. You get angry at that pain. You get angry at that devil. You get angry at that disease. You get angry at that poverty and that lack. Cut out! In Jesus' name. I told you there was a day that that just the Spirit of God hit me and I said, I'll never be broke again as long as I live. And I haven't. I haven't. Well, I don't have any money on me right now. (laughs) I, I, I put it all in the breakfast offering, but, you know, I so said, why'd you do that? Well, so that I could have more. <laughs> Praise God. That's how you get more. Give it away. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. Isn't that good? Thank you, Jesus. Ears. Ears. Anybody have ringing in their ears? Huh? Answer it. <laughs> no, you think I'm being funny. No, no, dude. Answer it. Answer it. 
Here's the voice of God. Here's the voice of God right now. Right now. It's going into you right now. Say, hello, Father. You love me. You don't want my ears to ring. I accept your deliverance. Right now. It goes into you right now. Tell me, do you, do you, do you feel a difference? Is it something that's constant? Or is it periodically? It's constant, but I also hear my heart beat. Well, that's not a bad thing. To hear your heart beat, you know you're alive. All right. Do you, do you feel a difference right now? Right now. Well, not hearing the ringing is good to me. I don't. Praise God. Amen. Well, thank you for coming.